everybody. Welcome to the first review under the label. Um, what do we decide to call this? Um, Semper Ludimus. Yes, yeah, Semper Ludimus. They, uh, so we they, always. Pronunciation. There you go. You're, you're on that list. <laughs> <laughs> Semper Ludimus means we all, we will never stop playing. We are always playing. Uh, Liz, the Latin scholar, myself over here. Uh, I'm Jason, and we are here to review a game for you together for the first time. That game is... Obsession. We are obsessed about Obsession. We are going to review the second edition. Uh, so this get box is a lot fatter than the first edition. <laughs> and also with the Upstairs Downstairs expansion. So full disclosure, I actually had the first edition of this as a review copy, and then I bought the second edition with my own money because mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the first edition. So y'all already know we're going with this, but we should <laughs> give it a thorough treatment. <laughs> Speaking of thorough treatment, let's go to the videotape to the table. Uh, I'll tell you all about how it plays, about the, um, ups the upstairs, downstairs expansion, and we'll come back and tell you what we think. I wanted to just give a sense for how the base game worked, and that way you kind of have a little bit of a better context about what the game, the core of the game really is, before I get into that expansion. So then, it's a three-part management exercise. You're managing your cards, you're managing your tiles, and you're managing these little meatballs, which are called servants. So then, on your turn, what you're going to be doing is you're going to pick an activity, and I say, we are going to go to the Bowling Green. And we are going to have a good time, whatever we do at the Bowling Green. So then uh, you host an activity, right? And then uh, you take this footman, so it's like a servant, imagining, you know, we're hosting a party. Come, go servants, we must prepare the grounds. We must make everybody happy. Uh, so this is what the servants do, right? Uh, they're designed to make people happy. You're going to be doing that every single turn. So then uh, not only do you host the, the party and you hopefully get the benefit, you also invite up guests out of your hand. So then some of the guests are really easy. You just kind of play this card. There's no prerequisite. But some of the guests, like uh, Miss Eleanor over here, you notice there's a purple meeple down here. That is another servant, so you have to bring her down here. And that means that I've hosted a party with this servant, this servant, and these cards. I get these benefits so that so you can get reputation. Reputation is tracked right over here. The higher the reputation, you can go from one to two to three. Uh, the more points you score and the more um, the higher level parties that you can host and you get more stuff so then you can get reputation you can get money you can get extra cards everything about this game is baked on this particular part of um, the board that you're seeing over here this is more of a common area so then once you're done uh, and you can discard the cards and they go into the used area then you can purchase improvements upon uh, your um, wherever your, your player board. So then let's say I wanted to purchase this, this would move down and I'd pull a new tile. Uh, so, I mean, that's really the heart of the game. Uh, you have to manage these servants because a lot of times you're gonna wanna host a big party and you don't have servants. <laughs> or you have so many servants that are waiting around here, but your hand is small. Or you uh, wanna host a, a bigger, better party, but your, you know, your little tableau here is looking dinky and everybody's going, you know, the, your party's not very fun. I'm not gonna come to your house. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what these cards are telling over here. Um, so management, management, management. Uh, obviously, if I was playing another round, these would go. Uh, this would go in the servant course. So they don't come back immediately, and then I would use more servants and have more activities. So goal of the game is points. Reputation is points. Uh, tiles are points. You get objective cards. Objective cards are points. Uh, this here is a round tracker. In the base game, you are going to be competing for the favor of these very, uh, the courtship uh, of these um, powerful nobles over here. Uh, that's in the base game, and it also in the solo challenge in the, that is comes in the base game. Uh, you're going to be competing for these very, very powerful cards, which will come every single you know little while. You'll be able to kind of play them depending on if you are the leader for that particular area. So that is uh, a basic game of Obsession. It's gonna last you about 20 rounds in the extended game, shorter for the um, short game. But I'm not gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you something else. Let's go show you some upstairs, downstairs content. All right, we have zoomed up nice and close to the player board so that I can show you. These are the basic um, servants right over here. 
Uh, you got the butler and the handmaiden, or the head housekeeper, that's the one, the footman and a couple of other servants. Uh, and what the expansion adds, and this is kind of the main mechanical addition to upstairs, downstairs, are the additional servants. So uh, in a basic game of upstairs, downstairs, they, um, most of the servants tend to be mandatory. So then it says, I have to play a footman here, I have to play a footman. So here goes the footman, and then the lady over here says, I have to uh, be waited on by the lady's maid, so I'm going to be waited on by the lady's maid. However, let me get you guys out of here for a second. These servants over here perform specialized actions. So let's say I had a magical game where I'm playing um, <laughs> all of the servants. I can invite the cook. The cook is also going to be helping out and raises the reputation of the um, a possible guests that I can uh, invite. I can invite twos and threes and fours and, and whatnot. Um, uh, the, the, the useful man uh, gives discounts to uh, purchasing over here. So he has disappeared over here. I'm going to go give a discount on the, the builder's market. Here you go. He's gone. Uh, the, um, this guy over here can add money. So if this was, let's say I invited this guy over here too, uh, he would actually add 100 bucks. Uh, I mean, you just, I mean, look at you, a cloud of servants. And I think that's what the feel that the expansion is going for. It wants to kind of give you this sense that you're in an estate and it's covered in busyness and servants and people running up and down the stairs and frantic all behind the scenes so that all of the nobles uh, have a good time. Uh, thanks to the, to the uh, tireless efforts of many, many servants that are operating behind the scenes. All right, before we get back to Liz, I want to show you some just component stuff. So this is the box. It's actually a lot bigger than the base, uh, the first edition box. You see there's some pop on the bottom because it's chock full of stuff. You take it out, you got your rule books, and you have some really, really snazzy um, containers for different components. So like you have these cigar boxes, I guess they are. Um, <laughs> So they're particular to each house. So what you can do is you can store the starting stuff for each house. So I have them in little baggies, um, starting uh, with the meatballs and the tiles and the cards that each house gets individually. So um, just kind of give that to somebody and you're ready to go to play. Um, you have also these kind of snazzier boxes right over here. Uh, this holds like the tile uh, and the bag. And this uh, the other box, I have like the meatballs and car uh, spare cars and all that kind of stuff so you know just really home run on the new presentation so far um let's get to the upstairs downstairs expansion so that's the regular rule book uh this is the upstairs downstairs expansion so most of it is dedicated to the new meatballs obviously but you have modes over here so this is one of my favorites which is the solo challenge uh, a different solo challenge that focuses on estate building you have rules for five or six players competitive team play um, and milestone cards which uh, operate a lot like the uh, goals and like a race or a role for the galaxy different ways to score different ways to win uh, and of course <laughs> new improvement tiles and more stuff all around all right so that was obsession at the table um, so we're going to break it down for you right now um, Liz, uh, so you are like you were super passionate about this game, so I'll let you lead. Uh, tell us, uh, uh, in terms of, like first impressions, um, you know, playing the new expansion and, and having the second edition there. Uh, what do you think? So, there have been some tweaks made to the rule book. The first one I really enjoyed because even though it was a little bumpy, there were like two rule books, and there was like the whole bit of Victorian research that you could get into, and like all those components are still there. You have the really great flavor text. There is also some attempt to clean up the rules. I will say, however, that my first impression of Obsession was not as good as the way that I feel about it now. This is a mm -hmm. game that I think grows on you, and I think right. still. Even, you know, looking back at my review of the first edition, I think this is still true, that this is a game that you like for the theme. So mechanically, it's good, it's fun. But the thing that's really gonna take it home for you is loving what the game is about right. and being able to kind of sink into the like, hmm, who shall I have over tea so I can build up my estates, you know, aspect of things. I like to just pretend I'm Maggie Smith and... <laughs> <laughs> if you're not playing this game with a, a little thing of tea with your pinky pointed out <laughs> or some kind of like little role play thing that you're doing, you're completely doing this game wrong. 
Right. Or you can just be like that dirty American heiress who comes over and has a lot of money, but she just is so scandalous. That's a trash bag. <laughs> <laughs> so all of these types of people are really wrapped up into the game. And if you are reading the flavor text and thinking about what kind of person you're inviting over and like really getting into it, I think that's where the game really, really sings. I do think that the rule book can still be a little dense and confusing personally. Mm-hmm. You know, I was when I approached the upstairs downstairs expansion because I was doing that for the first time it really still kind of hit home for me that you know the rule book is imperfect because there's just a lot going on it's not as streamlined as it could be but I think it's worth a push through because this is one of those games that I've really kept enjoying it's kept hitting my table over years and really not every game for me is like that Right. I mean, I think the the concept is pushed through. Obviously, the theme is attractive. You know, you are this, you know, Victorian home and you're inviting people over and you're trying to like, you know, you start off as like this pauper who can barely afford anybody cool. And then you build up and you have, you know, servants flying around. And I think the draw of the upstairs downstairs expansion is more servants. So like you get that more kind of cloud of witnesses. And if you've ever been in any of that kind of situation, whether it's like a, a movie set or, you know, some, you know, well-to-do person's home or something. There are people just buzzing around the kind of behind the scenes. And it, it, the upstairs downstairs expansion really kind of plays that, you know, ups that a lot. So, like, thematically, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I won't play without the upstairs downstairs expansion unless it's a brand new player. So, like, yeah. if it's just me, I'm, that, I'm throwing those servants in. Yeah, I mean, if you want to get, you know, your flirt on with the Fairchild heirs, you're going <laughs> to do it with an audience. Uh, you can do it with a hall boy. The hall boy, he's like, Mo, sir, can I have some Mo? <laughs> <laughs> I shot the shoes really good. Can I have some more? Oh, here you go. I have a tip. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about the, uh, oh, it's the handy, the useful man. I liked yes. that because we use the term handyman. I didn't know that people thought of like, oh, the useful man. Yes. I feel like that's just, it really takes it up a notch. You <laughs> and know? Does like seven I don't have things. a handyman. I have a useful man. <laughs> yeah, he does seven things. It's great. Um, so like just upstairs, downstairs is amazing. Thematically, this game is just a home run. You know, like you have to just, I can't say enough about the theme. I think <laughs> that's been remarked enough. I think um, in terms of the actual evaluating this game as a game, you know, and I think that you definitely hit it on the head uh, in terms of it can be tough to kind of get past certain things, right? Um, so I had the experience. I played it. You know, I played it with with um, Dan at PAX, I think. I didn't, either I played it or I heard about it from Anthony. Like I had experience with it. So I played it. It's like, all right, I, good, good review. Let's, you know, move on. And then I get the game again and I hadn't played it in a couple of years. And it took me a while to like learn, yeah. relearn the stuff because like the, the phases, A, the rule book is very dense. Like it, it mixes in theme and mechanism, which I don't know if that's, that's the greatest way to kind of like give access to the game itself. Um, and it has like seven phases that you go through and they're simple. Like once you learn them, they're simple, but like, you know each of the phases there's room for like little accretions in each little phase so it's like yeah. okay i'm gonna play a card but then the cards have all, all these exceptions and i'm gonna play a tile and the tiles have all these exceptions and i'm gonna you know play a servant but the servants have all these like little things going on so like it's hard to learn fast and yeah because that- it's not intuitive necessarily like a lot of thematic games you really have an easier time picking them up because the theme and the mechanics are wedded so tightly right. i think there's a little bit of a breakdown going from phase to phase in this one. Right. Um, expe- so like, if it were a simpler game, it would be fine. So like, you can have multiple phases. And if it was like, a, just like, okay, put a pawn here and play this card, that's like a symbolless, you know, featureless card, like that would be okay. But like, not only do you have the multiple phases, you have like, you're basically trying to combine three streams, right? You're trying to play the right tile with the right cards and with the right servants. So you know, you have all this, this kind of like complex phase, but you're also trying to combine these three elements, these three resources. And if you don't combine them effectively, <laughs> you are going to lose. <laughs> this is a game, and, and maybe this is a compliment, maybe it's not, but it reminds me a lot of Race for the Galaxy, where- I love Race for the Galaxy, so compliment you know, I, Well, in the sense of like people who are new hate Race for the Galaxy, like they, they can't stand it. It's like, you know, you're there and you're like, oh, what are all these symbols? And you know, you end up with five points and your opponent has 60. And it's like, uh, I, I just got murdered. This is not fun. And I think in this game, because of these three things that come together, like if you don't play the right tile during the national holiday with the right set of cards, and it, or if like one of those kind of things messes up, you're not, you're, you're, your score is going to like just really crater. And 
like that's not like a criticism in a sense because um, you know, if you get past that barrier, you'll have competitive games and you'll be really good at it. Uh, you know, you can play thousands, you, you literally could play thousands of these games. They'll be a little bit different and you'll still get something out of it. But that initial barrier, both in terms of the rules and in terms of the strategy is difficult. Uh, I think that's, you know, I think that's kind of what you're saying, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one thing I really did like about the upstairs downstairs add-on though, is I like that there's now another way to play solo. So yeah. in my initial review of the first edition, I really enjoyed the solo mode. So that's not a question, but I thought that courtship in solo mode was really difficult because it was random. you, yeah, yeah, because it was random. So basically you, you know, you could have open or closed courtships. So you either know what you're going for in terms of courtship and you already know what the AI is going to score. So you're basically a little bit too psychic or you're shooting in the dark, but the AI score is consistent. So it's, it's that sort of aspect was more fun with more than one person because you could kind of gamble and have one person, you know, get it right and another one not, but in the AI, it didn't work quite as well. So now okay. there is a different way of playing solo where you're really focused on building up an estate and the courtship aspect is taken out of it. So- And the objectives, just, and they just really like kind of pare down a lot of the extraneous, um, random stuff so like that was another criticism of the basic basic game there was a lot of like random elements like the tiles came in randomly and if, if you missed some of the really good tiles for your combo or your objective card and you know so a lot of like that random stuff got eliminated in the in that solo estate challenge like and it's just yeah. like can you play this game can you you do you know the tiles well enough but they're all there and you, can you like, uh, so it's, a, it's almost like, uh, cause I did a playthrough on my channel and I almost, I related it to like a VR mission in like a video game. So like, you know, how in Assassin's Creed, you can like, okay, here you have to kill these, uh, these 10 people in five minutes using this technique. And it's like, okay, get good at this technique. So, <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, you're, play, you're playing VR obsession. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that the, especially if you are a newer solo player to the game with all that stuff going on with all the new servants and upstairs downstairs, I actually think it's a really nice way to play. It's a little more contained. And I like having a couple of different solo options to choose from because sometimes I do just want to have a weird sprawling thematic experience with bad flirting. And then... <laughs> <laughs> Other times, I just want to build up a really good state. I don't know about your flirting. My flirting's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an American heiress, you know. I was just oh. never going to win the heart. <laughs> <laughs> don't invite Liz over to your house. She'll give you a lot of money, but just trash your reputation. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrible for your reputation, as you know. So. <laughs> <laughs> the Dice Tower has never been the same since you've arrived. <laughs> oh man <laughs> so uh, yeah i mean I, th I think i think that's about it in terms of what I, I i thematically a home run just i mean you've never played this soaked in like you can just tell it's almost like it reminds me of like dying wool so it's like you gotta like you know die and die and die like it's folded yeah. in the the theme of this thing like there's you know every little nook and cranny you can kind of look over you know uh this little piece of thing this card this tile and like the theme has just been layered in there so effectively um so like you're definitely there for that and then mechanically uh it does have a big barrier and it does have like it's hard to play it's it's hard to kind of get into it and play well once you overcome those barriers i think that liz and i both agree there's an excellent time here we're gonna be playing this game for a long time yeah yeah you know so you want to go into ratings should i go yeah, first let's do rating all right so full disclosure my very first rating of this was a seven mm -hmm. but then i was thinking about it and i was like you know what though i love this game more than that so i switched it to an eight and I think that really at this point, I'm at a nine. Like, I, I don't, I don't think it's a perfect game, but I just love it. Like it just grows on me over time. Wow. <laughs> I just, <laughs> you know, this is one of those ones that. You're so mean, kinda... Liz. I'm so surprised. <laughs> Your game ratings are like, look, it's like blood, draw blood from a stone. We finally got one. <laughs> but I can recognize, you know, a game that I re I mean, the reason I'm stingy with my ratings, right, is when a game like this comes along that I just really, really, really really like that's mm -hmm. the one that i want to give that 19 it's just a really good game i would I'm not go with you um, i have my own rating but you know what i'm i'm gonna give you the the, the floor liz <laughs> we're gonna go seal of excellence on this one we'll go nine out of ten as an official rating for this game for, for the two of us i'm good with that because i'm at the end of the day i'm going to keep this game in my collection as well the upstairs downstairs expansion 
to me, it's not necessary if you just, if, especially multiplayer. Multiplayer the game is fine. Yeah. Um, solo, you know, if you want to kind of like have that richer, deeper, dramatic, uh, strategic experience, it's almost like I have a game up here, Terraforming Mars. Like if you play it solo enough, like you've played it. And then yeah. you want those extra pieces in order to play. So upstairs, downstairs is that way where it's like you get good at the solo. Now you want something more. And that's absolutely, you want that because those extra servants, they, you can add them out of turn. They do all sorts of different stuff. They're thematically really cool. <laughs> and they're useful. They're very useful little men uh, over there. Um, so I, I'm definitely going to go with Liz. So uh, that is our review of Obsession 2nd Edition with the Upstairs Downstairs expansion. Yep. Imperfect, but I'm obsessed. Oh, we're going to end on that. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you very much for listening to this review uh, in Semper Ludimus, our little series over here. Uh, this is Liz and Jason saying, uh, go ahead and enjoy your games. Later, everybody.